Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this is a Digital Ocean Tech Talk, and we're streaming on Twitch and Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, there's got to be one more YouTube. Um, so no matter what platform you are on, welcome. Uh, we're super excited to have you here. My name is Kim Schlesinger. I am a developer advocate at Digital Ocean. And this talk is called Best Practices in Monitoring a Kubernetes Cluster with Prometheus, Grafana, and Loki. It is April 27th, 2022. Uh, and like I said, I'm Kim Schlesinger. I uh, am a developer advocate at DigitalOcean, focus on cloud native technologies, mostly Kubernetes. Uh, and that's what we're going to be uh, showing in this talk. So if you're watching uh, and you have access to your chat, I would love for you to say hello, uh, maybe say who you are and where you're watching from. Uh, I'm never able to say everybody's name out loud uh, when I ask that, but I'm really curious where, where folks are located. So please say hey uh, and let me know where you are. So, um, a little bit about me. Um, so right now I'm a developer advocate at DigitalOcean. Uh, before that, I worked as a site reliability engineer at a company called Fairwinds. So Fairwinds is based in the United States. It's a Kubernetes consulting agency. They have a software as a service product and they have a services department where companies would hire their teams of SREs who would build their Kubernetes clusters uh, and then maintain them. And part of that maintenance was monitoring and alerting. So as a team uh, at Fairwinds, when I was an SRE, uh, we would go on call for uh, Kubernetes related things. And so we had to be really thoughtful about what parts of the Kubernetes cluster are we monitoring? What are we alerting on? And how do we respond to that? And we'll be um, showing you a little bit about uh, some approaches to that in this talk. Um, so let me pause and yeah, we've got just a ton of people watching. Thank you. We've got Med85, welcome. We've got Rob from the UK, hello. Doug from Indianapolis, Indiana in the US. Gary also from the UK. Ali from Yonkers, New York, welcome. We've got Elvis from the Netherlands. We've got Ying Huan from Canada, hello. Uh, Chantiana, welcome. We have Po from Taiwan. Arpit from India. Arc Foreign 613 from Chile. Greg from Seattle. William from Brazil. Ethan from Los Angeles in the USA. Wong from Hong Kong, Alexander from the Czech Republic. Oh, this is so cool. Uh, Andre uh, from Argentina. Uh, ooh, and then Chantiana saying uh, they want to become a Kubernetes admin. Well, this is a good, um, like knowing what to monitor and how to set that up is important. Uh, let's see, Yuri from Poland. Lee says hello. Um, and I'm just going to pick one more <laughs> random one because I, I'm not able to uh, say hey to everyone. So let's do uh, Lee from Guada from the UK. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to say that that destination. So thanks so much for saying hi, everyone. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat. I will do my best to answer them. I might answer them uh, when I'm sort of at the end of a section because it can be can be difficult to give a talk and answer questions, but. We've got a wonderful audience from all over the world. Uh, I gave you a little bit about my background. And so uh, let's, uh, let's hop right into it. So this is what we're going to be covering today. Um, so the first thing uh, that we're going to do is we're going to install uh, three different tools. One is called Prometheus, one is called Alert Manager, and one is called Grafana. And uh, these are all of the tools that we're going to be using to set up our monitoring stack. After we install those things, the next thing that we're going to do is talk about uh, if you were only to pick five alerts uh, when monitoring your Kubernetes cluster, I'm going to give you my recommendation for what those five things should be. So we'll talk about what those alerts are and sort of how I've come up with those, uh, those particular five. After we talk about the alerts and we talk a little bit more about the philosophy of monitoring and how you might approach it at your company or if you're a Kubernetes administrator, uh, then we're going to configure one of those tools that we installed uh, called Alert Manager. 
And so what we'll be doing is setting up Alert Manager, um, configuring some alert rules, and then connecting Alert Manager with Slack so that if there's something going wrong in your cluster, that there's a place for that alert to go and let somebody know. After that, uh, we will just briefly look at what is Loki and how do you install it and how does it interact with Prometheus Alert Manager and Grafana. Uh, it's a logging aggregation tool. And then the last thing that we'll do is a recap and talk about all of the things that we've done. So we've got a lot on our plate. Um, so let's uh, keep going. So some prerequisites, if you're following along live or you're following along in the video that's posted afterward, uh, these are the tools that I'm using. Uh, so the first one is I have Helm 3 installed. Uh, we're gonna be using Helm a lot. And then the next thing is that you have a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I'm gonna be using a Kubernetes cluster using version 122.8. Uh, so if you're following along, 122 or above is best practice. Next thing, uh, I have the command line tool to interact with my Kubernetes cluster. It's called Kube Control. If you've worked with Kubernetes, it's something that you've used before. And then finally, um, you wanna have a admin rights to a Slack workspace. So you're gonna have to be able to create a channel and then create a custom Slack app. And so you'll need the right permissions. The good news is you can create a Slack workspace as an individual and have those admin rights to practice all of this sort of thing. So. Um, it takes a little time to set it up, but um, it's not hard to get those rights uh, because you might not have them at the company where you work, which is totally fine. So those are the prerequisites. All right, so looking at the agenda, the first thing that we're going to do is um, install Prometheus Alert Manager and Grafana. And let's get started with that. So I'm gonna minimize this. And I just wanna show you the Kubernetes cluster that I've got up and running. Oh, and I forgot to mention in the prerequisite section. So I'm using a DigitalOcean managed Kubernetes cluster. Um, it does cost money, they're, they're affordable, um, but if money is a real barrier for you in practicing this, you can use a tool like Minikube or Kind or uh, K3S. Um, so those are three different projects that let you run Kubernetes clusters just on your computer where you don't have to have something running in the cloud. So um, this should work in both of those, um, in, in those scenarios. So Peter is wondering, is this going to be recorded? You bet this is absolutely recorded. And then it will be posted on our YouTube channel, DigitalOcean, um, after the fact. So, yep, you'll be able to see this in the future. All right, so I've got my terminal open. I'm just making sure I can connect to my Kubernetes cluster. So I'm just saying kube control, get nodes. Beautiful. So I have this cluster running and it has three nodes. Um, let's just see what namespaces we have. Kube control get namespaces. Got four right now. Those four namespaces that uh, come prepackaged with a Kubernetes cluster default, kube node lease, kube public, and kube system. We're going to create a new namespace. So uh, just to re remember, we're installing Prometheus Alert Manager and Grafana. Oh, yeah. But before I do that, I did want to show you something. So I'm gonna to go to my resources tab and then I'm gonna to go to this link, the CNCF Cloud Native Interactive Landscape Guide. So if we go to the landscape, I wanna talk about why Prometheus, Grafana and Alert Manager. So this is the CNCF Interactive Landscape and there are a lot of projects in here. So the CNCF is a part of the Linux Foundation and as an organization, it supports new software products that are made for uh, creating things in the cloud, and then they have lots of education materials. And so the CNCF interactive landscape has these different categories and then a list of the projects that are relevant to that category. So we've got databases, scheduling and orchestration. And if we scroll over to the right here and then down, the category that we're working with today is observability and analysis. So this is the card mode. I'm gonna go back. We'll do this higher level view. So uh, we've got in this card observability and analysis, we've got monitoring, we've got logging, chaos engineering, continuous optimization. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be using Prometheus. Uh, and so it's a CNCF graduated project. It's an open source project that's had a ton of work done on it. It's very stable, it's good to run in production. And part of Prometheus is in the, the sub project called Alert Manager, which we're gonna use. 
And then the other thing, we're going to look at it today, but we're not going to use it a whole lot, is Grafana. Uh, Grafana often goes with Prometheus, but it's a different project. It's a way of visualizing data, um, and it connects nicely with Prometheus and comes with some pre-made data visualizations, which is really nice. So um, let's go back to that link. I'll have to go back a little bit. Yeah. So I like this part of the CNCF landscape. They give you a guide for each one of those categories. And so this is observability and analysis. And they just give you some high level information about like, what does that mean? Why is it important? What are the problems it addresses? Uh, this is something I really like. They have a list of buzzwords that you might hear that are related to this category. And then they give you some of the most popular CNCF projects. So there again, we've seen this before. There's Prometheus, there's Grafana. Um, and then we'll be using Loki a little bit, um, but that's in the logging category. So uh, basically, if you're using a CNCF project, especially if it's graduated like this, you know that um, it's solid and it's ready to go. And so that's one, that's one reason why we're using Prometheus in this talk. All right, so back to it. We are installing Prometheus, Alert Manager, and Grafana. And the way that we're gonna do this is with a Helm chart that packages all three of those things together. So let's take a look. Um, I go to my GitHub github.com slash Kim Schles. I've got the instructions there. And then we'll share out this repo as well as the slide deck if you want to follow along. So I just made this repository, Kubernetes Monitoring Tech Talk. All right. And here we go. First thing is we are going to install this project called the Cube Prometheus Stack. First thing we want to do is create a namespace where we're going to install that. So let's create a namespace called monitoring. So cube control, create a namespace monitoring. Let's make sure that exists. Cube control get namespaces. Aha. Uh -huh. See that new namespace created three seconds ago. Outstanding. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we need to have the Helm repo that contains this chart. And so we're going to add the Prometheus community Helm chart. So let me grab this. We're saying Helm repo add the Prometheus community repository. And that's the URL where you can find it. And Helm says, hey, I've added that to your repositories. And now we're going to update that just to make sure we have the most recent version of things. So Helm repo update Prometheus community. Looks like we're good to go. All right, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the Q Prometheus stack Helm chart, and we want to pass in this values file. So let's go to Artifact Hub real fast and take a look at what we're doing. So Artifact Hub is the repository for publicly available Helm charts, and it contains a ton of really useful information. Whenever I'm using a Helm chart, I usually go here just to see uh, what Helm chart am I installing? Like, what are the default values that get passed in? What things can I change? So cube Prometheus stack, there it is. I'm gonna go there. And so I like this uh, tag. Uh, this is the official project, uh, gives us some information. But the thing that I'm looking for now is the default values file. So I just clicked on the default values. So uh, if I didn't pass in this file, uh, these are all the things that would be how, it would, how this chart would be configured. And this is a super long values file. It's like 2,000 uh, lines long. Uh, but I have a copy of this in the GitHub repo. So if we look at values.yaml, this is that exactly. Uh, and we're going to pass this in. And there are some important rules that we want to be uh, set. Uh, so like starting on line 33, going down the line 59, um, you can tell this Helm chart, I want you to install this or not that. Uh, and so like we want alert manager to be installed because we're going to be using that. So uh, let's go back and grab that command. So we're going to install a release of Cube Prometheus stack and we're going to pass in that values file. So I'm going to grab this and paste that in here, maybe. I guess I didn't copy it. Uh, gotta, gotta grab the L on YAML. All right, here we go. 
oh, two army captains was said they were talking about they were doing something like this earlier and it took you a while to figure out you couldn't get Helm to create a namespace for you. I think you can get Helm to create a namespace for you, um, but it's not a flag I see very often. Um, let's see. Let's let's just, uh, while that chart is getting installed, uh, so I guess it would be Helm install dash dash help. And then is there a dash dash create? Oh yeah, so there is a flag. Um, where you can say, you can like run a Helm command and then say, create a namespace and then say the name of the namespace. I just like doing it beforehand. It just uh, helps me organize my thoughts a little better. So, um, and if you're just joining, welcome. I am in the process of installing the Q Prometheus stack. Uh-oh, and I got an error. So let's take a look. So it says installation failed post install. Okay, so something's going on uh, after the installation. Cluster roll failed post to this URL. Okay, it looks like there's something going on with um, a role getting created. So let's see if this actually aired out. Do we have anything in the monitoring namespace? So cube control get pods from the namespace monitoring. Okay, so it looks like something wasn't installed, but we do have all of the different pods running in this namespace. So at least something uh, was installed. So I'm just gonna make a mental note of that warning um, and uh, we may need to come back to it if we face other errors, but for our purposes, it looks like we've got things installed that we want. So this is the monitoring namespace and these are all of the pods that get installed in the monitoring namespace when you use the Q Prometheus um, stack Helm chart. And we see some familiar names, some of the projects, um, so we've got uh, alert manager. So that's great. We're going to be using that in the future. Uh, okay, we see this uh, Grafana. Uh, we've got cube state metrics running. So that's scraping metrics from uh, pods running in the cluster. Uh, we've got the operator here. And we have three node exporter pods. And then we have Prometheus itself. So let's just kind of like explore these three different projects. So we've got Prometheus, Alert Manager, and Grafana. And the nice thing is that all of these projects come with a web interface built in. So let's go back to the repo. And uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna poke around Prometheus, Alert Manager, and Grafana. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, Prometheus and Alert Manager. So let's grab this. So we're going to port forward the Q Prometheus stack Prometheus service. And then it looks like we're going to go to localhost 9090. So port forwarding that. All right. Looks good. Actually, I want to do this in a different tab. So let me cancel this. Um, so the reason I want to do this in a different tab is just so I can have multiple versions or like multiple different uh, services and pods being port forwarded and still have access to uh, cube control really easily. So let's go here. I'll make this bigger. And then there we go. All right. So let's go to localhost 9090. All right, so this is the Prometheus web interface and you can kind of click around here. If we go to expression, I like, I'm not sure if this is an image of the earth, but it says open metrics explorer. So this is a list of all of the different metrics that Prometheus is scraping from the Kubernetes cluster. So these are all the kinds of things um, that you can do with Prometheus uh, and like the different data that you get. And you can see there's a ton. Uh, it's in alphabetical order and we're only on C. So lots of things there. And then the other thing is if you go to alerts, um, there are some cluster alerts already up and running. And so this one is called watchdog. And then we have another one called info inhibitor. And these are alerts that um, exist by default. Um, so you can make sure that your alert manager and your uh, like where you're alerting to are actually connected and working. So beautiful. All right, Aaron has a great 
question. They're asking, how is what I'm doing different compared to installing from the DO marketplace? Great question. So let's go look at the DO marketplace. So this is my DigitalOcean cloud account. So I'm in the console here. And if I go to my Kubernetes tab and this is my monitoring talk cluster. And then there's this marketplace tab here. Yes, so what I just did with Helm, if you don't want to mess around with Helm from the command line, uh, you can install uh, this particular project from the DO marketplace. Um, so the Kubernetes monitoring stack, uh, if you uh, want to, you can install it just with a, a one click of a button. Um, and so I've got some nice instructions here. And then if you go through this, you'll see that I'm doing a lot of things that are in this. So basically it's just a matter of, do you want to do the first Helm installation on your own or would you prefer to just do a one click and like get it up and running quickly? So same projects, um, slightly different methods of installing them. Good question. All right. So where were we? Okay, so we were looking at Grafana. All right. And we see these alerts here and we saw all of the different metrics that are being scraped. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is show you Alert Manager has a separate uh, web panel. So let's have let's get access to that. All right, so we're gonna open a new tab. And we're gonna look at the command for that. All right, so it looks like we're gonna do port forwarding the alert manager pod and port 9093 is the one. So we'll, okay, so if we look at localhost 9090. Oh, I'm sorry, 9093. Yeah, Bleeb, so if you're using the DO marketplace, um, the installation will happen for you by default, but you're responsible for the upgrades. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're, we're working on that. We'd like, uh, we'd like the newer versions to happen for you a little bit more easily, um, but for now you have to manage them. So, um, all right, here we have the alert manager web panel and uh, we've got, it says not grouped. We've got all these things here. Let's like, unfold this. So we have, okay, one alert. It's that alert we saw in Prometheus called Watchdog. And then, oh, we've seen that before, info inhibitor, info inhibitor, info inhibitor. So those are the two alerts that come by default. And this is the alert manager web panel where if you're actually getting an alert, you can come in here and, and manage things from a, U, a UI instead of doing it uh, through the terminal or something. And it's often really stressful when you get paged. So it's nice to have something like this. Beautiful. So we've looked at the Prometheus web interface. We've looked at alert manager. Let's look at one more, which is Grafana. So one more tab here. And we're going to port forward the Grafana service with this command. All right, so we want localhost 3000. Beautiful. So when you go here, it's going to say, hello, you have a username and a password. And you might say, oh gosh, what is it? So when you first install Grafana using the Cube Prometheus Step project, the uh, username is admin. And the password, I never quite remember this, is prom-operator. Prom-operator. Beautiful. So this is the Grafana dashboard. Uh, and we've got all sorts of information here. And I just wanna see uh, what info can I get about Kubernetes uh, without me doing anything. So if we go to dashboards and if we go to browse, you see down the side here, uh, we've got this Kubernetes mix-in, we've got something from core DNS, but uh, Grafana comes with all of these data visualizations uh, pre-made for you. So uh, let's, uh, let's see, let's look at, um, I wanna look at, let's look at the kubelet. 
So I didn't do anything to configure this, but uh, this is data from the three cubelets running on those three nodes that I've got, uh, basically saying, hey, there's three cubelets running. There's 29 pods uh, that are related to the cubelets. Uh, within the pods, there's more than one container. So there's 51 total containers um, and just like a ton of information here. So Grafana is a really powerful tool. It comes with these pre-made data visualizations. You can also make your own. Uh, and we're not going to do a whole lot with Grafana today, but I wanted to show you um, what the, the Grafana dashboards look like and how you can access them. So we're actually going to close out of this one just so I don't get too confused. Um, and we will we'll keep the other tools up and running in our uh, web browser, but uh, we'll close Grafana. Okay, let's uh, see where we're at. So let's see. Uh, we have installed Prometheus Alert Manager in Grafana. The way that we did it was using Helm, and we used that uh, Cube Prometheus stack Helm chart. You can also use the DO one-click apps um, or add-ons. Um, and if you wanted to, you could install all of those projects separately. Um, you could do a separate Prometheus chart and a separate Grafana chart. Um, it's just a little bit easier with that particular project. Um, so that's one way to install Prometheus Alert Manager and Grafana, and then to look at the data that you get from those and sort of the capabilities of those projects by doing that port forward and looking at things in the browser. So, Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna step away from the tooling and we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, what should you be alerting on and how do you decide that sort of thing. And so um, I'm gonna talk about that and give you a recommendation for if you were only to monitor and alert on five things in your Kubernetes cluster, what might they be? So I've got this uh, recommended reading. Well, I'll get the... Um, the link for that and we'll put it in the chat. Um, so uh, this is from the CNCF blog. Um, it's from June 30th, 2020, which is a little old in like cloud native, uh, the cloud native timeline. But this blog post was written by Sarah Zella Husky, um, who used to be the VP of engineering at Fairwinds. And that's the company where I used to work. And I think it's just an outstanding blog post about uh, what should you be monitoring in a Kubernetes cluster and like just kind of like what is monitoring and what might happen if you aren't monitoring and alerting properly. So Sarah talks about what happens if you aren't monitoring. And then um, she describes best practices for monitoring and alerting. And she talks about creating monitoring standards. And so one of the interesting things about um, about uh, working at Fairwinds where I got to work with multiple different clients and see many different Kubernetes clusters is that we had a set of monitoring standards. Um, so whenever we would build a customer cluster, we had um, a repo of these particular monitors that we could apply via Terraform. Uh, and we just knew what these monitors meant. And when we got page for them, we had playbooks uh, around what to do. So, um, Sarah recommends, let's see, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. She recommends uh, that for monitoring Kubernetes, these 11 are a really good idea to monitor. And like, maybe those are just like the standard that you have, um, but uh, let's reduce it down to five. And then we'll talk about uh, how that relates to alert manager. So got this here, it says five alerts. And so from that list of 11, I picked five alerts um, where there is a corresponding alert manager alert that already exists. So these are five alerts that you can set up to monitor your Kubernetes cluster. Um, and you don't even have to think about it. These alerts already exist. So the first, uh, this is the Fairwinds monitoring standard from that article. The first is a Kubernetes deployment with no replicas. And so the reason you would want to monitor, monitor for that when you set up a Kubernetes deployment, you uh, specify how many replicas of your application that you want running. And if you have a Kubernetes deployment that has been created and no replicas have spun up, something is wrong. Um, maybe it's something with uh, a change that happened to the deployment. 
Maybe the deployment didn't roll out in the way that you wanted to, but you want to be alerted to that because it probably means that your application or something that your users are using is not available to them. And so that's the first uh, alert uh, that I recommend is checking for your deployments and making sure that all of your replicas are up and running. We'll talk about the corresponding alert manager alert in just a minute, uh, but let's go down the, the list. So the next alert uh, that Sarah recommends is uh, do you have a large number of pods that are in a uh, not running state that are in a crash loop back off or aren't ready or something like that? Um, so if your cluster is trying to spin up pods and they're not able to be scheduled or there's something in the configuration that's broken the pods, uh, that's going to need attention. So uh, monitoring and alerting on when you have a certain number of pods that are not in a running state. So that's the second alert I recommend. The third uh, alert I recommend is that uh, you get paged whenever there are any nodes that are not ready. And so nodes are the virtual machines um, that are running Kubernetes itself. And sometimes things go wrong and a node is not ready. So one thing that might be happening is that like maybe your cloud provider is down and Kubernetes is trying to spin up a new node and it's not available, um, but you wanna, you wanna be aware of that. Uh, another thing that can happen is if you have cluster auto scaling set up, uh, and you have a maximum number of nodes, maybe Kubernetes is trying to, um, to scale up more nodes, but it's out of room. And so that's something that you need to know. You might need to increase the number of nodes um, uh, that are allowed in your cluster. So that's another thing. Um, the fourth, uh, let's see. The fourth thing that you want to check for is unhealthy kubelets. Uh, we were looking at some kubelet data in Grafana and the kubelets, uh, there's one on each node and they help schedule pods. And so if your kubelet is down, uh, your Kubernetes cluster is not going to be uh, working as you want it to. And then finally, uh, an increase in the number of pods crashed. Um, so if you have lots of pods crashing all of a sudden, uh, again, something might be wrong with the deployment rollout or uh, there's something wrong with the underlying health of your, um, uh, yeah, uh, in your cluster. So, okay, that was a lot of words, um, but those are the five. If you're going to only monitor and alert on five things in your Kubernetes cluster from that list of the Fairwinds monitoring standards, these are the five things um, that I recommend. So I'm going to take a a breather and uh, look at some of the questions and comments. So, okay, uh, let's see. Emra says, how do we be sure what needs to be on the master nodes um, will be created while using Helm to install Grafana? Um, so in um, DigitalOcean managed Kubernetes, uh, you as the user don't actually have um, uh, access to those uh, like controller nodes. Um, I don't like the term master. Um, that's an old school term. Um, and so you don't actually have to worry about it. Um, if you're thinking about the other nodes that you do have access to, um, I guess you could think about resources, like do you have enough CPU and memory? Uh, and so that's something to consider with installing um, Grafana, Prometheus, and Alert Manager. Um, Ooh, Kenneth says, how do you prevent cube node not ready alerts for nodes that have just started? So if your virtual machine or your Kubernetes node is actually just like warming up and getting started, how do you prevent uh, an alert from firing off? So you can set the timing. You could say like, don't alert me until um, the cube node not ready um, has happened for more than five minutes or something like that. That's a great question. All right, thank you for those questions. All right, uh, we're going to come back to these alert manager alerts in just a second. But what we just did was very briefly talked about monitoring standards and like if there's only five things you're going to alert on, what would those be? And I shared that article in the CNCF um, for deciding those things. So let's hop into this third thing that we're going to do, which is con configure alert manager. So now we're sort of marrying the um, the theoretical, like what things do you want to monitor and like how do you actually monitor them and get alerts when you um, when you need to. So configuring alert manager is where we're at. And this is a really nice uh, graphic showing what we're going to do. And so uh, on the outside here, we've got the Kubernetes, like the 
the steering wheel of the ship. And so this is our DigitalOcean uh, Kubernetes cluster. And then our metrics go to Prometheus, which we already have installed. And Prometheus has uh, storage with it. And so that's already taken care of. That was uh, created during the installation of that Helm chart. And then Prometheus is going to send alerts to Alert Manager. We do have Alert Manager up and running. We saw those two alerts um, that we had, the watchdog and I think the um, info alert. Um, and then what we want Alert Manager to do is to send alerts to the Slack API that will then go to a Slack workspace. So if something is going wrong, um, then oh, you can see my cat in the background. If something's going wrong, that somebody gets notified. And so we're gonna be doing Slack. Um, there are other tools like PagerDuty and OpsGenie and Splunk um, where you can get alerts like on your phone. We're just going to show Slack for simplicity. So uh, let's get started. Okay, Kitty, stop it. <laughs> um, okay, Arabox asks, is Alert Manager part of Kubernetes or Prometheus or a separate object? That's a great question. It's a part of the Prometheus uh, project. So. Uh, you can set up Alert Manager for non-Kubernetes uh, environments, but we're going to be doing it for Kubernetes. All right, let's configure Alert Manager. All right, so we're back at our Kubernetes cluster. And we're going to look at that repo. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, my cat just jumped on my lap. Um, First thing we need to do is we actually have to do some stuff in Slack. So this is where you need to be an admin on a Slack workspace. So I have this Slack workspace. It's called River West. And so that's a neighborhood I used to live in when I lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, I created this Slack workspace for my friends and we just didn't end up using it. And so it's a nice, uh, it's a nice Slack workspace to do some practice with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a channel where I want the alerts to be sent. So I go here and create a new channel. I'm going to say, um, let's just say K8 alerts. And we're going to create that channel. And I'm not going to add anyone to it. It's just me in there. But I need a place to send the alert. So I created a Slack channel. The next thing I need to do is I need to create a Slack application that can communicate with this channel. And so the way that you do that is you go to api.slack.com. So let's go there, api.slack.com. And I'm going to this, your apps. And you can see I've been practicing this. So I already have a, an app, excuse me, uh, named Alert Manager Practice. Um, I'm gonna create a new app. And so, okay, let's do it from scratch. The app name, we're gonna say Kubernetes, uh, let's call it Alert Manager. Alert Manager, alert. And pick a workspace. So River West, I'm gonna create this app. Excellent. And then I need to enable incoming webhooks because Alert Manager needs to be able to send a post request to the Slack API um, in order to get information to that uh, channel. So incoming webhooks. So I'm going to say, yes, I would like to activate incoming webhooks. Beautiful. And we can test this out. So, oh, it says no webhooks have been added yet. So let's add a new webhook. Alert manager alert is requesting permission. Beautiful, yes. And then I need to pick a channel that the alerts are gonna get sent to. We want that K8 alerts. We're gonna say allow. Awesome, and if we go to that channel, we can see that integration was added. This is, okay, I, I the spelling on this is so bad. I spelled it all wrong. Alert manager alert. So, um, you know, if you want like a fun name, <laughs> that's one, but we'll, we'll just roll with it. Um, Beautiful. And now I just want to test, do those post requests, um, those post requests work. So I'm just going to go here, send this curl request. All right. So I should see hello world in that channel. Okay. So that's just a nice test to make sure that the integration is working, that I have that uh, Slack webhook URL and it's working. But now what I want to do is I want to connect alert manager with Slack. Uh, I've got that webhook URL, um, but I need alert manager to be um, to be up and running. So sorry, let me do that. 
All right, so uh, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, set up alert manager. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to uh, set up some configuration in a YAML file. So if you are in the repo and you go to alert manager dash config dot YAML, uh, this is the configuration. And I'm just saying, hey, for alert manager, I want to set up some configuration. And so uh, something that's really important is this Slack API URL. And uh, this one's a fake one. Um, but if I go back to my Slack and I copy this webhook URL, that's what I, I need in there. So let's uh, let's go to alert manager config. Okay, I left a note for myself that says update this. And uh, this is something you don't want to be public. So um, uh, right now, if I committed this to Git uh, and GitHub, you would all have access to that. And I don't want that. So just uh, keep note of that. Um, but I changed that Slack API URL. Beautiful. And let's see what else we need to do. Oh, we were just looking through this. Um, so you have to tell Alert Manager where it's going to send the alerts and like what tool it's going to send the alerts to. So uh, we decided on Slack. You can send the alerts to an email address. You can connect uh, Alert Manager with PagerDuty, Ops Genie, other tools that help uh, your teams go on call. Um, but we're doing Slack. Uh, and then uh, we've got uh, like the routes here so we can uh, group all these alerts together. We can talk about that in a minute, just some uh, timing things. And then uh, I want, uh, basically I, I'm saying, I want to get alerted on an alert called instance low memory. We'll do that in a second. And then I want to be alerted on anything where the severity is listed as critical. And then down here, ooh, I got to change that as well. Um, so the channel that I'm sending it to is, I believe, K8's alerts. Let's take a look. Yep, K8's alerts. Let's change that. K8's alerts. And then uh, I have this like templating here um, so that I can just get some good information about um, what what's being alerted, like what's the severity of it? I'm just grabbing data um, from the alert itself. So let's just uh, make sure I have all the things that I needed to update done. So the Slack API URL, and then uh, let's uh, just make this note by the Slack channel. All right, I want things that are critical as well as an alert called instance low memory, which we ha don't have yet. Okay, and then the channel update this. All right. So what we want to do is we want to update our Helm chart and we want to pass in this alert manager config YAML. And the way I'm sorry, I, I clicked the wrong uh, back button. <laughs> so I'm sure I scared uh, the backstage person. Sorry about that, everybody. Let me share my screen again. Um, yep, I sure did close the wrong tab. <laughs> I'm back, don't worry. All right, so uh, let me use the correct back button. And uh, OK, so what I'm doing is I'm going to pass in that um, that alert manager config YAML file uh, to the Helm chart. So I'm gonna upgrade the Helm chart and uh, make sure it sees that particular file. So, all right, here we go. Helm upgrade, we're reusing the values and this is the alert manager config is what I want. And let's pass that in. And we'll wait for that. <laughs> And uh, Jose, who is running the backstage, says it's all good that I booted myself out of this stream. <laughs> all right, so this takes a little while. Uh, let's look at our Slack channel. Aha, somebody else snagged my <laughs> webhook API <laughs> endpoint. Um, so yeah, that's why you don't want it to be public, because uh, if it has the token at the end, anyone can... Uh, can <laughs> do that. I'll revoke that after the talk. Um, all right, still going, still going. 
All right. Um, got some good questions here. Okay. So David asks, can we set up Prometheus and alert manager to monitor external resources like in an Nginx server in another DO droplet, for example? That's a good question. Um, I know that you can use Prometheus and alert manager, like you could set it up outside of the Kubernetes cluster and do that. And I'm assuming you could do it inside the Kubernetes cluster as well. Um, but I actually don't know. I don't have any experience um, using Prometheus and Alert Manager to get metrics and send alerts on something outside of the clusters. So that would be something good for, for me and for you to, uh, to look at. So I think so, but I don't know for sure. And then Kenneth says, how easy is it to set up these tools to monitor a separate Kubernetes cluster? So um, let's say you have a staging cluster and then a separate production cluster. Can you monitor both those things? Uh, yes, you can, but it just requires more configuration. And then Peter is saying, yes, you can. So uh, yes, you can. Um, oh, I like this. You just need to install the Prometheus client on the target. That makes sense. Um, so you got to install Prometheus like on that droplet that has that Nginx server or in that other Kubernetes cluster. Um, thanks, Peter. All right, let's see if, uh, okay, I got the your upgrade worked message. So let's see. Hey, hey, this is exactly what I wanted to see. So I'm back in the K8s alerts channel I created in Slack and I have some alerts coming in and there's a lot of them. <laughs> And so if I unfold this, all right. So it says, I think I've got nine alerts for you here. And it says there's one called cluster has overcommitted CPU resource requests. Um, okay. And then let's see what else. I feel like I don't see the headings very well. Oh, alert target disappeared from Prometheus target discovery critical. Uh, alert name, cube controller manager down. We've got cube scheduler down. We've got uh, that watchdog alert, CPU throttling high. Got another CPU throttling high on a different node. All right. So awesome. And then we've got info inhibitor. So we have um, alerts that are firing and those started firing after we configured alert manager by upgrading the helm chart and passing in that alert manager configuration. Let's go to the alert manager uh, view and, and see. Oh no, the port forwarding must have stopped. Got Prometheus. Oh, I closed the wrong tab. Well, that's okay. Um, let's see. So I want to port forward alert manager. Here's that command 9093. Where are we at time wise? All right, we've got 47 minutes. All right, we'll, we'll try and speed this up. All right, localhost 9093. So this is alert manager. All right, and we see we got those nine alerts in Slack and those nine alerts are here in alert manager. Um, and so let's say you're on call and you see the K8 alerts channel light up during your workday and you're like, oh my gosh, there's something going wrong in my cluster. I should go investigate. And let's say, I don't know, maybe nine is a lot and you don't want to, you know, you don't, have the ability to solve everything right away. So one thing you can do like with the CPU throttling high is silence the alert for some amount of time. So let's let's find that CPU throttling high. All right. So let's silence that. So you click on silence. I'm the creator. Uh, so we're just going to say oops, turning off for two hours to solve other issues. And then you click create. All right, and so we have this silence event on that particular um, alert. And then you see now we only have nine alert, or we only have eight alerts, not nine, because that other one is silenced. So um, if you get paged, uh, you can interact with the alerts this way uh, through the alert manager web interface. Um, so um, yeah, let's see. 
All right, let's look at our agenda and see where we're at. All right, so configure alert manager. So I'm not gonna be able to show you um, right now, but uh, it would be wonderful to uh, put together the idea of our five alerts um, with alert manager. So let's go back to that and let's take a look at this. So I was showing you five of the Fairwinds monitoring standards that I recommend if you are only going to monitor an alert on five things in your Kubernetes cluster. And I said, guess what? Alert Manager actually already has those alerts uh, built into it itself. So let's find these things. So we're going to go, we're going to go, uh, I'm, I'm so bad at Google Slides when I'm presenting, um, but that's okay. Let's see, where are we gonna go? We're gonna go to Prometheus. And we're gonna see these alerts in Alert Manager are only alerts that are firing. Let's see what we've got in Prometheus. So if we go to this alerts tab, it's saying, I don't think I'm port forwarding anymore. <laughs> yep. So let's run that command again. 90-90. Ah, beautiful. All right, so uh, I've got, looks like six alerts firing right now. Some of these should look familiar. And uh, if you want, you can, you know, show all the possible alerts. So these are all of the alerts that come built in with Alert Manager. Um, and so let's look at that list and then find the correspond corresponding alert here. So back here. Okay, so if you want to be monitoring your Kubernetes deployments uh, and when there's an issue with replicas, uh, I recommend this alert called Cube Deployment Replicas Mismatch. So let's take a look at that. And so this is nice. Uh, I like this interface because when you unfold it, you see how this alert is set up and configured. And so this is Cube Deployment Replicas Mismatch. And then we have the expression. Um, so like the data that it's pulling and the math that it's doing on it. Not sure I can. All right, something is e equal to zero. <laughs> uh, and then it's like the time frame. So over a 15 minute period, if there's a mismatch between the number of replicas specified and the number of replicas running, then you're gonna get an alert and the alert severity is warning. And then this is the description. And this is a really cool part of um, these alerts is some of them have runbooks like uh, already created. So let's see, uh, let's see if there's a runbook for cube deployment mismatch. Uh, not all of the alerts have, uh, oh darn. So this doesn't have a runbook, but um, some of these do um, saying like, here's what you do if there's a mismatch between the number of deployment replicas that you've specified and what's actually running in the cluster. So. Um, so what I think I would do is I would edit this, uh, and you can do it, uh, through a YAML file. And I would say, instead of this being a severity warning, I would say this is a critical warning because those are the things that I want, um, to be alerted on. And so that's one of the core things I would monitor in my Kubernetes cluster. Let's look at a couple more. Um, so uh, let's look at the uh, cube pod not ready alert. So we'll just copy that and we'll search here in the Prometheus web interface, cube pod not ready. All right, so we've got the name, we've got the uh, amount of time that is being evaluated, 15 minutes severity, and then we've got the expression and it says like, hey, a pod in this namespace has been in a non ready state for longer than 15 minutes. Uh, I don't think this has a run book, but let's look anyway. Nope. Uh, beautiful. So uh, what I would do here is instead of like um, just monitoring one pod, I might monitor a specific namespace or something like that, or say like, uh, a, you know, when there's more than five pods that are not running, let me get alerted. Um, so you would alter that. Uh, let's do one more and then we'll, we'll put some more pieces together and then uh, we'll wrap up because we are running low on time. So last one, cube node not ready. Back to the Prometheus 
instance cube node not ready you unfold this we've got the name uh this one's uh, got some simple math on it like is there a node that is not uh ready uh then you get an alert that's a warning i would change this to critical because i want to know about that um let's see does this run book exist come on come on Ooh. Now, this is nice. Okay, so this is what it looks like when one, one of those run books exists. It tells you what does that mean? Uh, why might you get alerted on that? And like some information about uh, how to like check the status of the node. So this is nice if you get paged and you're it's two in the morning and you're you can't remember why this is a problem. The run book is helpful for that. And in here, um, in the alerts that are getting sent to Slack. <laughs> I got another message from my uh, incoming webhook. Thank you. Um, but uh, there is a link to the run books here in that uh, template I gave. But as you can see, the run books are kind of hit or miss. But you could link to your own internal run books um, for these. So, all right. So um, there's one other thing I do want to show you. And I, I was alluding to it, but basically um, alert rules. And so... Um, if you want to create your own uh, alerts and rules, or you want to alter some of those things that I mentioned, uh, this is a, a way to do it. Um, and so you can specify the name of the alert. So this is instance low memory. Then you say th the math, uh, like uh, what number are you trying to get? And so we're basically saying like, uh, if the node has a, a memory that's less than this number, then I want to be um, alerted and it should be a critical alert. And then there's uh, <laughs> uh, there's some information here. So let's actually create this new alert. It's called instance low memory. Let's just make sure it doesn't exist right now. So if I go to Prometheus and I say instance low memory, that alert does not currently exist. So let's create it. Um, all right. So I'm going to upgrade that Helm chart. I'm going to pass in the alert rules YAML and let's do that now. Back to a tab. All right. Beautiful. No new Slack messages. This takes a little while. <laughs> All right, we'll look at some questions. Oh man, y'all have some good questions. Huh. All right, so ARC 4N361 says we use DigitalOcean load balancers using Nginx Ingress. Do you know if there's any possibility to monitor these load balance requests or is it possible through the Ingress controller? I do, it is possible to get metrics from uh, the Nginx Ingress controller. Uh, I don't remember how, but let's uh, monitor Ingress Nginx Kubernetes. Let's see, got some good, how to monitor Nginx on Kubernetes with metrics. Sysdig always has good stuff. Um, you know, Nginx Ingress controller. Let's see, let's just see if they have like a metrics endpoint. Aha. All right, this installs Prometheus and Grafana in the same namespace as Nginx Ingress. All right, so yeah, it looks like there are, you can use Prometheus and Grafana to do that. And the Ingress Nginx controller uh, project has information about how to do that. Um, good question. All right, another question from Jin. Should I install this stack on all clusters or should I have one cluster that has the stack and can, should I have the other clusters connected to it? I mean, uh, I guess it depends, but um, I, would I would just do this stack once. And then um, like Peter was saying, um, you need to install the Prometheus client on the target. So then you'd have Prometheus installed in your other cluster and you can just point, uh, point to that. So um, yeah, I would try that. Um, 
Greg says, trying to find the values YAML in your Git repo with the five example alert configs. I don't have that. The only one I have, I don't have all five. I just have the alert rules where I'm showing how to create this alert called instance low memory. Um, uh, and the reason is that, um, so this is a custom alert, um, but those other five alerts that are in the, the, uh, the slide deck, um, Alert Manager has those by default. Um, so you don't actually have to create them. You can just use what's already there. So what are we doing? We are trying to create that new alert, that instance, what is it called? Um, instance low memory. And we uh, applied that. Uh, we upgraded the Helm chart. And let's see in Prometheus if that alert now exists. So instance low memory. I wonder if I need to refresh. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Back to there we go. So instance low. Hey, hey. Okay. So here's that custom alert that I just made called instance low memory. You see the uh, expression and then some of the information. It says it's firing and that's on purpose. Uh, and then let's see if we get a, don't have a Slack alert yet, but I think it's gonna take maybe a minute or so, but it says it's firing. And I like these, uh, I like these, oh, why? Okay, it's like, why can't I see all of them? Uh, you can see all of the alerts that are firing. Um, so there we go. All right, so please hire me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let us, uh, let's start getting to the wrap up because we're at an hour and I know this is a ton of information, but I'm going to give you some resources um, to help you do this. So uh, what we just did was we configured Alert Manager and I want to show you one thing that uh, that is also helpful, but we don't have time to do today, which is Loki. And so this is a good link. So this particular set of tutorials is outstanding. It's called the DigitalOcean Kubernetes Starter Kit for Developers. And most of the information um, I have uh, in this talk, I have pulled from this set of tutorials. It's just a ton of information, but this tells you how to set up the Loki stack for logs aggregation. Um, and so Irobox is saying they don't see Loki in the CNCF landscape. Uh, I believe it's part of Prometheus, um, just like Alert Manager isn't in the landscape. It's just part of Prometheus. Um, so here's an introduction to Loki. Here's uh, what it looks like when you get it set up. So here's Prometheus and the storage, which we already have. We've got Grafana, which we already have. And then with Loki, you would install these things. Um, and then uh, you have to create a, a, a bucket uh, to store that information. And then uh, the nice thing is Loki can be uh, used together with Grafana where you can see the logs. And so let's say you get paged and... <clears throat> something's wrong and you're not sure, um, you could log into your Grafana dashboard, go to Loki, and then get all of the log information. Um, so, all right. So that is a very brief introduction to Loki. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's head back and uh, let's, let's do the recap. So uh, we have covered a huge amount of information here. Um, and so Let's just talk about it. So the first thing we do is we're trying to figure out, hey, I have a Kubernetes cluster and I need to start monitoring the health of the cluster. And I wanna be alerted when things are not going well so that I can check in uh, and make sure things are healthy and make sure my apps are running and make sure that my company's website is available to users and customers. And so uh, the first thing we did was we selected the stack of technologies that we're gonna use to do monitoring and alerting and logging. And so we used a lot. We used this tool called Prometheus. And Prometheus is a huge project that has these sub projects. One is called Alert Manager, one is called Loki. So Prometheus scrapes the metrics. Uh, Alert Manager, you can, uh, 
once you get an alert, uh, you can send that information to Slack or PagerDuty or Ops Genie or to an email. Um, and then uh, you've got Loki, which is the logs aggregator. Um, and then we also installed Grafana. We looked at it briefly. We saw all of the pre-made dashboards where you don't have to do anything, which is really amazing. And then Grafana and Loki together are a really powerful um, tool. So that's the first thing we did. We selected our tech stack. So Prometheus, Grafana, and Loki and Alert Manager. And we use that Cube Prometheus stack Helm chart that has all of those projects put together. You can also use the DigitalOcean one click in our marketplace. So first thing was the tooling. That's what we selected. Second thing is what on earth do you monitor for? Um, and like, what do you alert on? And uh, I shared with you uh, that uh, CNCF blog post from uh, the VP of engineering from when I worked at Fairwinds. Let's see, do I have it up? Nope, there it is. And this is a great blog post and uh, there are 11 pieces of, or 11 metrics or 11 alerts that uh, we recommended at Fairwinds. And I selected five of those. And uh, I selected these five uh, because uh, in Alert Manager, there is an alert that already exists for that. Oh, look at all you all in the slide deck. That's awesome. Um, and so these are the alerts that you can, um, that you can monitor. So uh, we talked, I mean, monitoring and observability, like that's a whole discipline in and of itself. Like check out some stuff from Honeycomb. Um, like you can really learn a lot. Um, and I'm not an expert in that area, but we just touched on like the philosophy of uh, what do you want to monitor in your Kubernetes cluster? All right. Then the next thing that we did was we set up Alert Manager with our Slack account. Uh, we created a channel, uh, we created that incoming webhook, and, and then we said, hey, alert manager, whenever there's a critical alert firing, I want you to notify that Slack channel. And that's right, uh, some of you got a hold of that uh, webhook URL <laughs> and are uh, in my Slack channel now. Good job, I like that. Um, and then the last thing we did was we just mentioned Loki. Um, yes, Bleeb. Uh, Yes, we will not see Loki today. Uh, I think I was a little ambitious on the scope of this particular tech talk. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you, Kenneth. Uh, we do have a question here. What other Kubernetes topics would you like us to have tech talks about? Uh, please let us know in the chat. And while we do that, I will share some other things with you. So what Kubernetes topics would you like us to cover? Let us know in the chat. Um, so in the slide deck, which you all have access to, I've got some resources, um, all the things that I showed you, uh, and then uh, like things in the starter kits. So if you're like, I just want to dig in and do this, check out the DigitalOcean Kubernetes starter kit. Uh, all the information is there. Yeah, and then thank you so much. My name is Kim. I'm a developer advocate at DigitalOcean. Uh, whatever platform you're on, please follow us so you can get notified of, um, of when we're streaming. Uh, we do tech talks once a week. Uh, some of us do live streaming on Twitch. Every Thursday we have a talk show called Cloud Chats and we'd love to have you join us. Um, and uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to sit here for just like a minute or two more uh, to see like what other topics would you like us to have tech talks about? Um, and yeah, ooh, there's one. Irobox says uh, they would like to learn about deploying Keycloak and Kafka in K8s. All right. I don't know what Keycloak is, but I know what Kafka is. So like some streaming and messaging. Um, so excellent. Thank you, Irobox. Um, well, thanks for the kind words, you all. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, I'll be back here next month. Um, ooh, here's another one, Peter. Adding a Windows node using Calico. Ooh, that sounds tough. <laughs> it says, Peter says, it's killing me. Thank you, Allie, for being here. It's nice to have you here. Thank you, Yuri. All right, well, oh, Keycloak is uh, identity access management from Red Hat. Oh, very cool. Um, cool. Well, uh, if, if you have other talks you want me to give, you can tweet at me. I'm at Kim Schles. Um, this talk will be posted uh, on YouTube uh, probably in the next 24 to 48 hours if you want to watch again. Uh, you've got the GitHub repo. You've got the slide deck. You've got the starter kit. I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>